and welcome everyone to the Creative Cast. My name is Lucas Homan, and we're back yet with another episode this week featuring a British slash um, Irish photographer um, who has been featured by uh, major major companies and newspapers like Hasselblad, Forbes, uh, New York Times. We got John Alexander with us today. Very excited to have you here. Welcome. Hey, Lucas, thanks very much. Really appreciate it. It's very kind of you to have me on the show. All right, nice. Um, happy to have you here. Um, I always like to start the episode with getting you introducing yourself so people get an idea of who you are. Yeah, sure. Okay, well, uh, so my name is John Alexander. I was brought up in the UK. Um, yeah, in a uh, in an earlier career, I was uh, in the Royal Navy as a... Uh, a clearance diver and a bomb disposal operator. And uh, I was in that career for nearly 20 years and uh, came back to my first love, which was photography um, in uh, late, uh, late 24, well, mid, mid to late 2014. And I've been really lucky since kind of uh, making that my profession to uh, have it take me far and wide um, from kind of all around Europe to the States, over to Canada, and then uh, bigger projects in Nepal and, uh, and Mongolia too. So uh, yeah, it's been a it's been a journey, and, and it continues to be. Um, but it's uh, it's great fun, and I've been super lucky to meet some amazing people along the way. Mm. Wow, yeah, that, that was a very quick review about you know so much work. <laughs> um, <laughs> frankly, I I got to know you uh, thanks to your uh, story. I call it story because that's how it's called on your website. Um, Generations, uh, which happened in, uh, you know, Mongolia. And I've seen that, you know, very famous image of this guy with the eagle standing very proudly. Um, and I saw that image like years ago. I was like, oh, wow. And I didn't even... <laughs> No, it was uh, like, I didn't know the name of the photographer, nothing. I was just like, this image is amazing. And um, I kind of got to know you like that, you know, because you got featured in so many different places. So I, uh, how about we start right away with that project? Now you can share yeah, with yeah, us a sure. bit about it. Yeah, well, thanks very much. I mean, um, yeah, Mongolia. So why did I go there? Um, I guess I guess one of the things about my my sort of, when I was a kid and, and uh, growing up, I was quite lucky to, to sort of travel a lot. Um, and I was really lucky to have a gap year where I lived in America. And that kind of opened my eyes to like travel, meeting people. Uh, and that was always something that's remained kind of like a constant. Mm -hmm. So when I was in the Navy, I got to travel around uh, North America, Central America, South America, Asia, the Middle East, uh, Europe, and whenever there was an opportunity, I would always try and kind of stray from the path and interact with people, learn about cultures. Mm -hmm. And I think, as they say, you know, travel is one of those things that you are perhaps the only thing where you spend money and are richer for it. And yeah. uh, that's, I think, something that still echoes much in my work. So when you kind of consider, you know, what you want to do as a photographer, how you want to use a medium, um, I think the Mongolia Project, you know, was something where I wanted to sort of shine a light on Kazakh people, mm -hmm. how they live, um, to observe their kind of family values and how they communicate with one another, mm -hmm. especially in this very digital age, um, and how they're in many ways kind of the masters of mindfulness um, and being present um, because they uh, aren't inundated with technology. And um, so that led me to make the trip to fly out there, to travel overland, to go to the western reaches of the country and spend a time with two contrasting families, an older, more traditional family, as described by the character you saw, whose name is Bashakan. He's a very celebrated Kazakh eagle hunter. Um, and his family, his, you know, his wife, uh, his, his, uh, his uh, son and son-in-law, and then their, their children and so you've actually got three generations who live in one house mm. in the middle of literally the middle of nowhere right on the high altai plain um and then on the flip side to show to shine a light really on the next generation 
they're younger, um, you know, kids effectively, really, that, you know, are growing up within that area who have stayed, put, not, you know, not gone to Ulaanbaatar or, or to the big cities, but actually chosen to live that rural lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, shine a light on them, really, because um, much has been shown and documented beautifully with film, documentary and so on in the past. So this was really just uh, aiming to kind of like, I hate to sort of use the word capture, but capture the characters, convey a sense of culture and atmosphere mm-hmm. and show two contrasting sides of that civilization, really. So, um, okay. So um, how about um, maybe from... We could talk about your approach to um, photography with the series uh, in a sense of how you actually use the media of photography to to show and to tell that story. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I sort of, before I, before I left, I knew to a degree roughly what I wanted to say mm-hmm. in the sense of, okay, uh, you know, I want to show one family and show a different family. So I kind of knew that. I knew there'd be um, a need to be sort of uh, tactile um, and uh, get to know these people first before I kind of dive in with the camera, and that would always be my style. And um, so in, in in doing so, I kind of knew a basis and a theme for the project before okay. I left the UK. Um, but then when I got into situ and onto the ground and integrated with the families in, you know, in, in equal measure and, and, and over time, mm-hmm. was then more about bringing out, you know, just a sense of the context and with, within which they live, yeah. um, what that looks like, what it feels like, um, you know, uh, an, an eye to the landscape, an eye to um, their rural uh life um the details you'd expect to see some of those touch points and then some of the characters in the sense of the pride as you say that you you kind of feel and you can see in the eyes of um of the hunters the huntresses the families you know that and it it does it just you know that their their pride just is burning burning out of their chest almost yeah um (laughs) you know and also the the kind of interaction that they have you know whether it's um Bashikan, the one you mentioned, mm-hmm. you know, on the top of that mountain in, in a 40, 50 kilometer mile wind, yeah. just stood there looking out over this land with his eagle, mm-hmm. uh, or whether it's the two boys who are 17 and, and 16, um, who work super long days, they herd, mm-hmm. they hunt, they, they're lambing, um, you know, they're tending the ground wherever they can. Uh, and then equally of an evening they're sat around the fire. There's wow. no TV, there's no computers. Yeah. Um, and, they're, and they're talking to each other. And like all brothers and sisters, they're having, you know, taking taking the mic, they're having jokes with each other. Yeah. And then equally they're, they're super proud and they're desperate to jump on the horse and show me what they can do with an eagle without me <laughs> asking anything. They just pull me out and say, come and, you know, just point and show me mm. what they can do. And, you know, and, and these beautiful moments happen. So... I think uh, I think the key thing is making the time. So you've got the time to get to know them a little bit. You mm. can develop trust. You can explain why you'd like to do what you do. Yeah. And uh, I think one of the cool things was, you know, um, I was sort of editing within reason daily um, while there, and uh, I would be able uh, with my laptop show them pictures of themselves. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I think you know it's not the first time, but it's it's a rare a moment for them. Yeah. So they see pictures of what they've been doing, and and they. And I'm just thinking of the two boys particularly that you know they're just taking the Mickey out of each other, and then when we come and shoot some stuff the next day, they they become more adventurous and they're posing more and they're yeah. you know they're just having fun with it. So they're it kind of makes it really, as well. Yeah, 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 and it's make, it makes for a beautiful kind of collaboration, which I always think is the best way. You know, it's a a two way thing. It's not one person telling another. It's a it's a suggestive, but it's like a you know, and I think for that kind of documentary project, it's. Um, Hopefully, uh, it, 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 uh, it's authentic and hopefully it kind of gives the viewer a sense of what it's like to be there. And, and all these those kind of projects come from a place really links back to an earlier time, which is, you know, documenting. I mean, I started photography in 91 and when I was in the Navy, you know, I was, I was away on a Patagonia, for example, on the Arctic Circle, either or other. You know, I thought, well, will I ever get the opportunity to come back here? Probably not. So I felt kind of an obligation, if you will, to photograph and document 
um, partly for my own self, but moreover, really, for other people who maybe never ever get a chance. Yeah. And I think that sense has kind of continued within that kind of documentary work that I've done, um, Mongolia or Nepal, mm -hmm. come to mind. And it's it's the same kind of thing, really. It's it, That's what that spurs my creative, uh, uh, well, it spurs the motivation to shoot that kind of project. Yeah. And it informs, in those style of projects, it also informs the the, the, the storytelling viewer. style. Yeah, the kind of, you know, the broad-based contextual stuff, then the personality, the portrait, the detail, then the emotion, the expression. Mm -hmm to put it all together and then sequence it in a way that hopefully, you know, you, the viewer can kind of feel a connection with those people and yes. not just see a landscape, see a person, but actually hopefully feel something from it. Mm -hmm. So would you say that's sort of the main goal throughout your work? I think it is. I think, I think certainly for that kind of stuff, it is. Um, well, I went to um, one of my sort of first projects that I took on since uh, turning pro, was to join an expedition climbing Everest. And, um, you know, that that wasn't really so much about Western climbers, but the actual aim was more to talk about the Sherpa. Uh, you know, um, it, it, what they do, um, why they're so important, why they sit at the heart of mountaineering in, in the Himalaya, yeah. um, and shine a light on them rather than, say, just talking about Western climbers who are yeah. semi-pro, pro athletes, and so on and so forth. So, again... It definitely um, this sort of theme of shining a light, who's you know, on those whose voice may not be heard, is is certainly a recurring theme. You know, the commercial mm -hmm. work and advertising work I do, less so, but it's, there's still an element of uh, in in my approach. I guess the the common ground would be the storytelling. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, painting a picture of what a person's like, what they're doing, why they're doing it, how they're doing it, yeah. and breaking that down, and I think that's kind of that pro that that process has come with time with earlier projects pre pre being a pro mm. and then since with some of those more immersive projects like Everest and then and then in Mongolia you know just kind of breaking down the scenario the situation and trying to kind of convey so I think yeah definitely storytelling is is a common thread for sure mm. I I see a lot of or oh, now that I hear you explaining it um, I see the intention of of creating how you call it um like awareness as well yeah sometimes i mean it, it, again it will depend on the context but yeah i think um generations is is an, is an element of you know there's an awful lot of amazing work that's done around the world about climate change about rural migration about sure. immigration and some of my work you know, it, it might touch on it, but what I try to do is to, you know, let's be honest, we get so much bad news yes. <laughs> in the media. Um, what I try and do with my work is it is in some very micro way to balance the narrative, to celebrate mm -hmm. diversity, mm -hmm. to celebrate beauty of our planet, to celebrate uh, the fact that we're all different, and that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. And in respect to the labels, let, let's just just uh, shine a light on that and go yeah we're all different yeah. so what it doesn't matter rather than trying to fight you know a battle of the sexes battle yeah. of something else it's just yeah. actually just say look here's a bunch of people we'll go to this is how they live take it from it anything you want please you know that'd be, be brilliant if mm -hmm. you don't doesn't matter but maybe it might inspire you to think of people in a different way or you know and i think that's something that also fuels my work a bit to be honest um mm -hmm. yeah I, I would i would say so um yeah and I think in terms of awareness, I mean, on that front, you know, I've done a little bit of kind of conservation work, um, kind of, you know, linking my ability to dive uh, yeah. with, you know, uh, in the kind of conservation and ecology world. And, and that's been re rewarding for me personally to see that's been used to kind of inspire other countries to pick up the torch and, and follow best practice or mm. think actually there's some some good aspects of what this country's doing. Why don't we do similar bits in our country within the ability we can, you know? Yeah. So that's yeah. again as a photographer, that's that's an immense um uh sort of I don't know. It's, it's immensely gratifying. That but you know, but again I, I I'm a small, very small player in this. There's millions of people that have done this before and, yeah. and do it on a much grander scale. But but certainly, yeah, with some of the stuff, it's, it's great when that has some kind of impact, um, mm -hmm. for sure. Of course. I mean, um, whenever someone does 
try to do some more documentary style um, um, you know work and there's always um, you know an attempt of being objective with what's happening around them but yeah. it's inevitable to give what you create your own touch right your your way of seeing it and your perspective that's I just I think that's inevitable but at the same time also very important like it would be sad to miss out on that even though the goal is to be objective definitely and I think I think as long as you are um, mindful of taking an objective chair then I think mm. you know let's face it we are inverted commas artists who use photography as a medium and so we will have our own eye and our own skill and I think there's something to really hold on to because the beauty is we are all different and that's a gift mm. and so you, you be objective or be fair if you will inverted commas when you do documentary work but as you say you know your decision process and mine will be beautifully different yeah. uh, you know as would anyone else's and you may choose to shoot something from a different angle you may be drawn to a different subject or use of light whatever it may be no that's not mm. really the point is it's it's like a kaleidoscope isn't it you can both look through the same thing but see a different color and that's the really cool thing about mm. it all so yeah i think if you t try to uh, strip that away and um you know uh just make it uh, the whole thing very, uh, you know, clinical, then yeah. I think actually you'd be failing as a storyteller as well because if, if you're not feeling it and seeing it and it's incredibly clinical, then very likely that your audience will feel the same. And then all of that effort, all of that time, all that collaboration is all for naught really, isn't it? Mm -mm. Totally. I mean, you, need, you, need, you as the creator need to be the first person that cares, you know. That's just how yeah. it is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, it's just, it doesn't exactly. make sense. But keeping that in mind, um, I feel like what I, well, one of the aspects I really appreciate about this series or story uh, about Mongolia, uh, this Mongolian people, is that you tell it from a perspective of, you know, um, of how proud they are in a very positive way. You know, look how they're very, um, uh, you know, just happy with the way they live. Because I feel like it could be really easy from uh, a Western point of view or Western mindset to go there and pity them from, yeah. you know, yeah. and go like, oh, yeah. look how little they got, you know, for example, <laughs> or look how um, they're living in these poor conditions. It will be very easy to see it that way as we are used to something very different. And um, I think that's something I do at least personally appreciate about this series. That it's, 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 you know, really put in their shoes in a way. That's nice to hear. Thanks. So I'm glad you, you see it because that's kind of what part of what I was trying to do was, was, you know, part of it was to kind of evoke a sense of like, a, I don't know, less is more. Yeah. And, you know, we're, we're shrouded in stuff, things, consumerism. Mm -hmm. And, you know, these these folks don't have internet, don't have TV largely. Um, they might, I think I saw one mobile phone in six weeks. Yeah, within, the kids had one. I saw one picture where three kids were one. looking at one. That's the one. Right, you know, right. um, that, that's the thing. And, yeah, I appreciate that you can you can see what I was trying to sort of almost say, which was, you know, um, it's not about wealth. It's not about what you have. It's about values, about family, about mm. connection with one another. Um, and, yeah, um, come to it from a, maybe a, a more balanced perspective in terms of, you know, having a, uh, having a tester on your driveway doesn't make you happy. Yeah. It means you have to earn more money, which means you have to work harder, which means more stress, and 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 allowing people to kind of join those dots themselves, you know, mm -hmm. and and showing like you know in the purest form, here's a bunch of people who've lived this way for hundreds of years, mm -hmm. and uh, and they're very proud of who they are, but there's nothing wrong with being proud of who you are. It's just how you project that outwardly, and that's when 
let's face it, we start to have problems all around the world. But, mm. you know, people, people can be proud of who they are. And that, there's, there's no crime in that. And I, and I think that was something that I was trying to sort of say in a way, subtly, mm. through this to say, yeah, you know, these people are proud and that's okay. And they live there and that's fine. They're actually Kazakhs who live in Mongolia. Yeah. You know, but they have a Mongolian passport and they live very happily and they, you know, they, they're incredibly proud um, and, and you know, they, they care about each other. They have time for each other. Um, you know, they, 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 they have to survive. So they work incredibly hard. Those boys are up at four in the morning and they probably won't sit down until about nine o'clock at night. And then they're right around the stove with their mum. You know, they have no dad. Dad died. The eldest boy there is only 17. He manages the whole area. Oh. Uh, and with his younger brother and and they just crack on but they you know they've got um uh very few clothes they've got very few things uh but they are they seem to me at least um genuinely very content yeah it's a simple life you know um yeah so if 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 there's something in that that inspires other people then then that's that's uh that's gr- super nice to hear yeah. and equally if it just inspires to maybe look at people around them in the cities they live and think actually, yeah, it's okay that we're all different. This is what makes them, you know, this is the fabric of society. This is the fabric of our globe. Mm. You know, otherwise if we're all the same, wouldn't it be dull? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you know? um, yeah. That's, just that's the thing. Watch, watching these kind of works uh, just, um, you know, it makes you more grounded, more down to earth for sure. Um, and Hearing the story about these boys that are, you know, in their teenage years, really working so hard, uh, so long, uh, it will be unimaginable here, really. <laughs> yeah. like, Thank you. <laughs> no way, no way. It's it, it like it. It's it would. It sounds illegal, right? That's that's how. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, oh, that, that that doesn't sound right to me at all. <laughs> 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 But for them, it's it's normal and okay, and um, um, yeah, just just as important as anything else and it's and it's kind of a it's you know it, it is a visceral lifestyle they have so i mean you know you see in the shots so there you see one of a young young girl who is sort of going to be the next big eagle huntress yeah and she wears you know she wears this fur coat and i know that for western eyes will seem quite at odds but um all of the pelts that she wears in her coat are from foxes that she herself has hunted and mm. found and eat and it kind of it just brings things really linked up and again i understand for, for many people that will be at odds and I, i get it but for them it's how they live and yeah. you know it's it's it's, it's how they live but you mm-hmm. know so rather than sort of forcing western values upon them and judging and assessing it's just saying look here's a snapshot of how these yeah. people live right now there of, you go you know ask, from from when this uh project actually is like which year like, I, i didn't actually find that out Yeah, 2019. Yeah, 2019. Right. So it's actually quite recent. Right. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was just, uh, you know, very lucky I chose to do that year, not the year after, for obvious reasons. But uh, yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Into Flew from the UK into Beijing, Beijing into Ulaanbaatar, and then mm-hmm. Ulaanbaatar, um, again, internal flight to the Western, uh, Western Fringe, okay. and then overland, you know, uh, to get to location. So it's quite a lot to kind of get there. And then, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool. Though. It's super cool. Yeah, super cool. All right. Uh, did did you did you uh, finance that project yourself, or did you get uh, fun? Was it funded by by some? Oh no, no, it's else? funded by me. Yeah, no, it's, oh. it's funded entirely by myself. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So cost of it, as you can imagine, as same with Everest as well. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, I think what's nice is of. The projects I've shot in the last couple of years that that one you know uh, it, it got picked up by Hasselblad who was you know shot some projects with only in terms of as a Hasselblad owner mm-hmm. um and that that was nice that they kind of I, mean, I think they were they quite liked the project and it was really nice that they used their their voice to get it out there so people could see it and come across it yeah because you know the challenge and everyone knows the challenge is getting your work seen that's the yes. key um, so that was you know it was nice that All of that work, time and effort, it's probably a realistic. It real in terms of time, you know, if you, if you did pre-production planning, mm. then time on the ground, and then edit, and then putting everything together, 
I'm going to say we're talking getting on for 16 to 20 weeks worth of work as an honest amount, realistically. If I oh. think about the whole thing. That doesn't yeah. sound like that much, actually. <laughs> yeah, I know, I don't know. It seems like forever I thought you were going to say like two years or something like that. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, okay. No, I mean, I, I think I had, had the edit and everything nailed within uh probably four weeks of getting back but mm. but when i could consider the totality like an honest yeah it's probably more like that really all right um, so it's nice that given that effort and given their time yes. um that the light has been shone on it and pleased to pleased to say that it's going to get um exhibited in paris in may yeah it's um, part of a i was going to yeah, say that a part of a broader thing um so um you know it's the, the portrait of humanity is a, is a bigger exhibition with some incredible you know fellow photographers uh, who are featuring with it mm. um, but it's uh, nice that I got recently asked invited to kind of join that and yeah. uh, and for it to be shown there too so that's cool so it's again nice to see it's just nice for me to know these people will be shone you know the light will be shone on them if you will um yes. in different ways so through Hasselblad um through a couple of other I, I got interviewed by the Royal Photographic Society on it too and then obviously your good self so mm. it's nice that it's been seen um you know and then hopefully will be enjoyed by people you know as time moves on really I, I hope so yeah. you know it sounds so exciting uh, when I saw it like it will it will be exhibited at the Atlas of Humanity in Paris uh, I think from, from the 27th to the 29th of May Or March? We're on the money. Yeah, it was, it was <laughs> yeah. May, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's full on. Exactly that. Yeah. And um, so good. I might even pop around myself. Like, uh, it's because it's not that I mean, far from where I live, so. <laughs> there you go. And, and, and heck, you know, there's there's an awful lot of other work that's going to be there too. So, you know, there's, I think you you, you probably get a good uh, good value for money in the sense yes. of the amount of work, amount of projects there. It's pretty inspiring. I'm going to try my best to, to get up there. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and 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 take a look so. at the other work. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. So. Yeah. I guess I should. Yeah. All right. Nice. Yeah. So, um, you know, I've I could ask you ten more questions about this project, but <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> no, sure, sure. no worries. No worries at all. <clears throat> and let's speak about also, um. I would like to touch right away, so I don't forget about it. Um, you know about um, the topic of creativity. Let's um, give it a shot. Um, I always, I always ask what creativity means to you, and how it impacts your work. Yeah, it's a good question, and it's you know, it's, it's a complicated, it's a complicated it's a question, and one. probably a fairly complicated answer. Um, My interpretation of this would be that I think my creativity or my creative approach comes from a sense of storytelling. Mm. And that approach comes from having a fairly documentary style photography background in the sense of being in places, feeling compelled to document them, mm. the people that made that experience, uh, the location. And I think I haven't shaken one of a better phrase that mindset off and that informs my sense of storytelling mm. um, and that more storytelling style approach within photography then rather than maybe being a straight portrait photographer or a um you know a, a, i don't know a wildlife photographer or a sports photographer mm. i think my kind of those influences that background in photography those experiences i had in life before being a professional photographer have yeah definitely influenced my sense of creativity and the creativity is kind of almost started from more of an observational taking photos mm. to with time and examination and thought process to more making photographs and saying here's a theme I want to talk about this is the message I want to put across this is the emotion I hope to evoke how do I shape up a story to 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 get me there yeah. and so Give you an example. I, I shot a project this summer uh, in collaboration with two freedivers, um, partly because of, you know, for me as a child, I learned to dive at the age of 10. Mm. I did a degree in maritime studies and then pretty much 20 years in the Navy. So I've got a long, collect, very long connection with the Navy, sorry, with the sea. Yeah. And I wanted to find a way to kind of take my photography back there a little bit too. And I think that'll probably be more 
you know, more in the future. Mm-hmm. And so I wanted just to tell a little very simple story between two people of kind of um, reconnection or connection, depending right. on how you interpret it, the, the images, and having faith in one another. And that, you know, that and if you sort of ask, why did you come up with those things and how? It's probably a sort of small comment on the state of play at the moment with COVID, where you know we've we've gone from a, a civilization where we used to speak a lot mm. to a civilization that had phones to a civilization that's gone very much into text um, and messaging, and sometimes there's something lost in that. You can't always get gauge a tone. You can't always you know, there's always open to misinterpretation and misunderstanding, mm. and so you have that kind of change in the way we communicate. And then you throw COVID in on the top. And there's, there's, there's all the ingredients for people to really, their friendships to be tested, their working relationships to be tested, um, misunderstanding one another, yeah. you know, all of these other things that are kind of there in the backdrop. So this is really just a simple little story of two people connecting and and one one saying, come with me for a swim, for, for one of a better phrase, yeah. and just kind of getting people to have a bit more faith in one another Okay. Not necessarily believe everything they read in the news or on social media and to use our own judgment a bit and just to have faith in humanity a little bit. So it sounds like big stuff. And, and, I, and I don't necessarily, you know, that, that, that series may not necessarily echo all of that, but mm. but um, it's called Trust Me. And, uh, yeah, if you have a look at it, let me know your thoughts because, you know, you might see it, you may not. But uh, that's kind of what I'm like trying to drive out. And I think, yeah. Sorry. No, I did, I did, I did see Trust Me. I, I was thinking about it actually when, when you were talking. Because it's one of those, well, it's, I think, the only series I saw, which was on the water. Yeah, that, that, that's it. And there's a documentary one, which is just about environmental advocacy and conservation. But but there's a now so now underwater project this year, if, if this was that. And, um, yeah, and I think it's it's part part of, you know, where I'm starting to kind of head towards is, 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 is a... Uh, you know, rather than necessarily observational or documentary. I mean, mm. it's just with the storytelling side is actually to look at another way to tell stories. And maybe if there's themes that are important or themes that I think might resonate with people. Mm. Um, and it's one of the projects that's probably had the most interaction recently other than, say, Generations. Oh. Yeah, generations intrigue people because it's quite rare in the sense yeah. of the subject matter. Uh, this is less rare. It's just two Western people. But okay, it's underwater. It's with three divers. We did it all without, you know, without uh, scuba. And there's an element of technical side to it there. But there's the element of like, okay, yeah. So it is quite a, at odds with a lot of the rest of my work. But it's uh, it's interesting to shoot and 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 to produce it. So yeah, it it was well, it is definitely um, unusual to say the least. Um, and I, I see there how that um, comes back to this topic of it trying to convey, um, you know, values that are being threatened, values that are, you know, being forgotten. And it reminds me of how you describe yourself, um, uh, you know, in in your bio, which is um, at heart, I'm a humanist. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I just, yeah, I don't know how to put it really, but you know, when I work with people, I work with some, I work with some fairly famous uh, people, portrait-wise, and musicians, and and a couple of athletes, um, which is a fantastic experience. It's great, but but I'll be honest, quite often when I'm working with someone no one's ever heard of, um, that can be the most rewarding experience. And sometimes when I look at what motivates me as a photographer, there's probably there's probably two dimensions to it. One is the actual experience at the time of taking the shot yes. or being on location or the combination. And that's would be part of what fulfills me with satisfaction and enjoyment and a sense of reward. And then the other part is the actual image out the back of the camera, you know, or, you know, it, when it, when I finished with the edit yeah. is to say, yeah, okay, actually that, that, that image definitely does something to me for me. And, um, you know, but but uh, from the humanist point of view, yeah, I just think sometimes the more stripped down, the more real inverted commas someone is, or you know, not necessarily seeking the, the, the fame of just someone who's just a normal person. Yeah. Um, I find that to be the most rewarding experience, I guess. Yeah. And some of my favorite photos are with people who no one really knows. You know, I've got photos of famous m- musicians, come com- composers, uh, famous uh, athletes, climbers, mountaineers. 
Yeah. And it's fantastic experience to meet these people, but actually sometimes the experience with the lesser known is maybe the more rewarding. And maybe there's something in that for when we're trying to find inspiration of what to shoot next mm -hmm. and thinking, oh, we should be booking these, these the good and the great. Actually, sometimes working with just nice people who are, you know, normal, down to earth, strip back, whatever, yeah. <laughs> whatever label it is, is the most exciting um, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and perhaps the most collaborative as well. Um, there, there are so many, you know, famous photographers that have, been, that have gone completely down that road of, uh, you know, portraying, you know, well, they went even further, not only those who are not known, but, you know, like the thoughts to be the worst of the worst of the society, you know, they have gone very, very far that way. Um, but you describing it that way, this um, reminds me of a, of a guest I had on my, on my podcast, like, uh, I'll say like one or two months ago. He, uh, Trevor Humphreys, he is a um, Dutch illustrator very nice guy and his work is um you know very light-hearted and you know very comfortable cozy sunny you know very good feeling um mostly sports and what he does is he um most of the times has people in in his illustrations and these people have blank faces so they don't have distinct features they're just you, you, there are no eyes no nose no mouth it's okay. See, and I asked him why he does that. Why does he not, you know, paint a face um, to that character? And he explained it to me um, this way. He said, if I would paint it very realistically or I, I would do very dis um, clear features, people couldn't put their, their themselves in that character as easily. Uh, that's very clever. Yeah, yeah. That makes total sense yeah. to me, right? And yeah, as, I mean, that's, right? yeah. that's awesome. Like, I think, yeah, sorry. I <laughs> just no, 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 sorry. You know, um, I, I, think, I, I think that's uh, very, very clever. I think I was reading just the other day about storytelling, you know, and this could be uh, illustrators, could be, uh, you know, painters, photographers, whoever, really. But actually, it is... You know, in, in this age, and I know a lot of photographers feel the same, you know, there's this, oh, we've all got to be um, shooting moving image now. We've, you know, we've got to let stills, leave, you know, maybe behind. Mm -hmm. But actually, you know, um, in some ways, um, a well-crafted photograph or story which leaves something open to the imagination is going to resonate on a much deeper level and be much more memorable than something that's quite a transactional, consumable video that just spells everything out from start to finish. And when you you put a, an incredible movie up against um, uh, an incredible work of art, you know, yeah, the movie will always be known and talked about and so on and so forth. But actually, how how deep does it resonate with you? Whereas if you look at a you know a, a, a beautiful painting or a or a photograph that has left room for the viewer to interpret um that's gonna you're gonna remember much more. it's a bit like a you know um you look at all this you know like super violent films and you know horror films and all the rest yeah. of it and they're just the worst in my opinion <laughs> <laughs> on tv and on netflix and everything okay, right? okay. Just, Take it, it you know i don't know <laughs> but to me it just feeds these patterns of behavior in society but um but to me the clever ones are the ones where you don't see and we it allows your imagination to to join the dots in your own way, and yes. I think that's where the clever, uh, you know, a clever script or a clever piece of cinematography or combination of the two probably, you know, it works well. And I think in photography and in in, in painting and, and you know other forms of visual art, I think mm -hmm. there's there's that's the real the real gift because it you know as, as Travis done so beautifully it. It, it makes you stop it makes you engage and it makes you interact and yeah. hopefully any good art will always do that and i think if you've done that you know you you, you know you, you've got it right and i think that that's the key yeah uh, i mean the reason i brought it up is because uh, you were saying um the series uh trust me um has has received so much more feedback and 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 you know attention uh, you know, then maybe all the all the series of, of you have done in the past, and um, maybe the reason is that 
you know, um, that they are people that are not famous, you know, mm. because when you see someone that's famous, like, oh, okay, that's that guy or that or that girl. Is that guy and they're doing something you know, different? Or yeah, different has nothing to do with me. You know, that's, you yeah. Know, subconsciously, yeah. that's what you do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I mean it's it, it's interesting. It, it, it was it was uh, it was kind of nice because it felt like a bit of a brave step, you know, in in, in direct, changing direction. Um, but um, you know, uh, yeah, it's in, it, interesting to see people interact with it. You know, and it, it's funny because you know uh, I put it under the nose of a, of a few you know kind of photo editors, advisors, and some mm-hmm. some absolutely loved it, um, and some one particularly was. Not not a fan, but that's okay. It, okay. It's a, as we all know, there's no right and wrong answer. It's yeah. massively subjective. You know, um, I, you know, do I believe in it? Yeah, I think I do in a way. And, I, and I, would I like to do more of it? Absolutely, for sure. Mm. You know, uh, so uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. But um, yeah, it's uh, it is interesting. It's interesting how people interpret work. Definitely. Yeah. Um, if it fits your goal, because it all depends on what your goal is with your work. Mm. Um, if it in this case, it does, and um, if if that's you know what you want to achieve with it, if it goes along with the values you are you're trying to convey, then you know it perfectly fits. But I don't know if it, if if your goal is making a portfolio of famous people um, to, to show yeah. off you know, <laughs> yeah. your technical abilities, sure, then yeah. do that, yeah. right? But it's it's all about what yeah. you want to achieve in the end. Yeah, exactly. This is exactly that. Exactly that. Yeah. Um, when it comes uh, to to your to your career, um, specific, specifically your photographic career, um, considering that you have been in so many different places, you have um, organized, founded, and um, done so many of these yourself with the team obviously but you know it was your inis- initiative um when it comes to what what is the learning curve you have achieved through that what are the pivotal things you had to learn that you maybe didn't um, know how to deal with in the beginning uh, because then this this podcast is a lot about sharing valuable information about teaching you know the young younger generation of of creative minds especially photographers <laughs> how to you know achieve uh, their dreams and how to get their projects um done and fulfilled right so um what would you share about your journey ooh um, <laughs> <That's a lot. laughs> I, I, yeah i think i think in in no particular order and, and you know but i hope i hope this is of value um i think one of the biggest things especially for people who have maybe had a another career and they're coming to photography whatever age but if they've had something before and then they come into photography i think mm-hmm. you know um unless you come from an arts background or very creative environment I would say that most of the people have come from some form of linear background where they know where they're going to start, they know where they're going to end, and they know roughly the path they're going to travel, mm-hmm. you know, and maybe the good and the bad, but nonetheless, there is a path, there is a kind of a, a, a game. Um, I would say with photography is the biggest thing is um, steer away from being labelled as much as you can. Um explore the use of the medium as much as you can just try different things and by different things i mean not just techniques but different projects so you know um, i think it's really important to look at um interaction with people but i know for younger photographers that will become you know that that can become a bit of a hurdle Mm -hmm. but the sooner you do it the better and you can always find ways within the shape of your project to shift the emphasis away from you and maybe make it about a, like a third party subject. Okay. Um, so I would encourage, uh, I would encourage experimentation, exploration of different genres. So try sports, try, you know, try, um, portrait. Yeah. Try wide life, all, all yeah, of just, their just life. Try it. And, but I think the common ground with all of this though, is, is anchor them around the project so that you have a sense of purpose of what you're going to do and why. Mm. And you've built yourself a framework. So you're used to operating in a framework. You're you're putting, 
you know, you're putting some form of framework around that idea, that that co- concept, so that you then can you can then plan from that. You can yeah. then estimate resources from it. You can know the kind of hurdles you might have to go through, um, and and you know you know don't be don't be afraid to step outside of your comfort zone. Don't be afraid to challenge yourself. If you're not challenging yourself, you're not growing really. Especially if you're younger, you know where your your propensity to learn is so much better and so much higher. Mm-hmm. So push yourself. And I think I think maybe one so that would be one big like bag of yeah. advice. You <laughs> may know, may I just lesson. ask something about that real quick before but, you uh, yeah, keep going? Yeah, yeah. And something you pointed out was um, try to avoid being labeled. What do you mean mm-hmm. by that? I think once your your work's uh, maturing and you're starting to go to market, you will find agencies, agents, and um, potential just direct brand clients will want to put a label on you, but especially agencies. They'll say, oh, you're an adventure photographer, or you're a portrait photographer, or you're a okay. fashion photographer. They would try to put you I would have, Yeah. Yeah, I would avoid that as much as you can until you really know your groove. And that, and that knowing your groove takes years and takes time. Okay. And it is, you know, somebody said to me recently, and so I had time relay this advice. It's an iterative process. You know, you can't rush it. Unlike, you know, if you come from a, a, a maybe a background and you're managing projects or programs or people or resources, it's all pretty linear. You know, you know roughly where you're going to start and you know roughly where the end is and you know roughly what you've got to do. Um, but there is a path. Even if that path has a few kinks in it and a few bends in it, there is a, there's a road. With photography, definitely not the case, I would say, in my opinion you know i'd say it is native and it's a journey of self-discovery as much as anything so i would have tried to avoid being labeled um i Mm. would if as long as you possibly can afford to do explore different genres explore different projects and even if you think if you think oh i can't do a fashion project well it may not be fashion but you could say i want to go and do a road trip and i'm going to document some of the people that i meet and the way i photograph them might be similar to a fashion shoot so yeah. there's a way of like breaking down that barrier in your mind. Um, you might have an aspiration to say, I want to be a fashion talker. You know, but you might say, well, I can't afford to get models. I yeah. can't afford to have an assistant. I can't afford all these things. Okay, but what can you do? You've probably got time. You yeah. can probably plan things effectively. So I think what I would say is try to avoid being labelled and uh, labelling yourself. Try and think about, and it will only come with the more work you shoot. Mm-hmm. What you feel epitomizes your one creative approach and two your style. Yeah. And look at the bits in your work that you like the most and the experiences that you've enjoyed the most. Mm-hmm. And and if you could if you have if you got a passion or a hobby, maybe perhaps link that together too. Okay. And then and then build projects around that. So, so I would say I would yeah. say I would say use a project-based approach. Yeah. to then as a platform to explore different genres. That's okay. that, that would be the biggest thing I would say. Mm. And avoid labelling yourself too early until you've really done that exploration and you think, I just want to shoot people or I just want to shoot landscape yeah. or I want to do a combination. Until you really know that, and that will that just takes time. Okay. And that doesn't necessarily mean years. It just means a lot of work. Yeah. So it could be, you know, and reflection. You know, mm. you need to think about, reflect on it and go, okay, what was good, what was bad? You yeah. know, um, so that would be my suggestion for what okay. it's worth. All right, I see. I see what you mean now. Uh, I didn't understand in the beginning because um, I heard I heard the the phrase um, "try not to be labeled." I was like, hmm, "Okay, labeled," and I I thought you meant like, okay, you know, he's a portrait photographer, he's a sports photographer, he's whatnot. Mm-hmm. I was like, "Hmm, isn't that supposed to be a good thing?" Like, I and like, yeah, it, that, it that's like, that was my first thought. Like. Um, it's important yeah. that people know what you can do and be good in a very yeah. niche and find your niche and whatever. And then it's like, oh yeah, you mean it in the very beginning stage. It is that you're absolutely right, and that that's the key. Is in the early days, just just a bit. Dark, I would say, I think probably two words would be explore and experiment. Explore genres and experiment techniques yeah. to find what you, you really. Find- like and are good at absolutely and that's the key and then i think once you've got that and once you feel you have that body of work then by all means go to market as a portrait photographer or as a storyteller or an adventure photographer whatever it may be Mm -hmm. you know um but i would try to avoid being labeled 
labeling yourself too early yeah. and uh, you know, I would just as long as you can afford to do it I would continue to explore and experiment until you feel like you've really got your thing and and equally I think the other thing I'd add on that is there's no harm I don't feel that if three five ten years down that road mm-hmm. and you've been successful you want to have a change direction you know quite honestly I, I personally don't think that's necessarily a bad thing because if you've lost your passion for what you're shooting, it will show in the work. Um, some might say, well, once you've got your group, you should stay with it. But if your passion will, you know, for it dies with time, then it yeah. will work will also. Whereas if you can find another way to do something different, and by using um, personal projects, you know, self, self, uh, self-designed self projects, you can use that as the vehicle um, to, to try these other routes and try these other paths as well, you know. Mm. So I think... That would be one big bag of, of advice that you know I would offer, um, and I think oh, I had something I was, I was thinking about. This was um, yeah. Um, I mean I that think, was already quite quite a good <laughs> yeah. right there, I mean, which I appreciate. Yeah. Um, I don't no, hear no, that no. very often, so um, okay, that puts some extra value on top there. It's um, it's something um, people don't really pay too much attention to but i think i think no. it 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 do be important because if you if you go that route you know and you give yourself the time you need to figure that out it will eventually help you out more because you will you will be better at what you do because you're more passionate I, I, absolutely about it. so this, this, it does this is the sense. thing with all of any creative form it's got to come from a place of passion Because if it doesn't, then you're going to be on the side of a mountain, freezing your body off, get you know, thinking, <laughs> "Why am I here?" Um, you know, being there. Like you come um, from experience there, I guess. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. <laughs> you know, you, you're sat there in a tent, and you can hear three avalanches every night. Some of oh, your expeditions, you... somebody else has lost three fingers, and you're oh, going, "Why am I here?" The Everest you know, is true. got to be mm, you know, to, in, in, in oh. honesty, you could, yeah. <laughs> But, you know, you, you have to, you, you've got to really want to do what you do. Or if you're having a tough time with a with talent on set, you've got to think, okay, why am I here? And, you, you know, you've got to be, so you want to, you want to go into these projects, eyes wide open, come shoot from a place of passion, and it mm-hmm. will show in your work. Because if you're passionate about your work and you're energetic and enthused, then your audience, whether that's somebody in the gallery, somebody in the magazine, a client you may be speaking to, mm-hmm. they're going to feel it and they're going to get, they're going to buy it. And they're going to see it, and then then it's it's you know I hate to use the word authentic, but it will be a true mirror of who you are as a person. Yeah, and you'll be good at it because you care about the subject. Um, you know, I you know, I've, I've shot stuff that I thought would be brilliant. I shot it and I hated it. I'd never do it again. Yeah. But that's all comes back to the uh, explore and experiment. And you know, and, and, and you, you know that. Don't be afraid to falter. A good friend of mine, who's a very famous portrait photographer, said to me recently, "Don't be afraid to falter." It's part of the process. It's part of yeah. the journey. Um, I think that's the other thing. And I think one other bit, if I may, in yes, terms please. of like advice. Um, but I think the other thing I would just add is, and I'm as guilty as anyone, um, the power of social media and Instagram particularly, mm-hmm. um, try not to make it your source of inspiration for your work. Mm-hmm. Because if you do, you'll only end up emulating somebody else and you'll find it potentially intimidating and soulless and your inspiration may well dry up. You know, for some people, it can be very, very useful, but I just think I would just say use it with caution because you can jump onto it, think you've done the best shot on something, and then look at someone else and go, oh, my God, like, that's it, I'm stopped. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm never doing that again. And that's not how it should work. It it, it, it should be, uh, you know, well, why have they got X amount of thousands of followers? And I have, or X amount of, that's nonsense in my humble opinion. It should be, what do you care about? why and what, what do you want to do what is it what's the story you want to tell or yeah. what, what is it you're trying to say and i think if i could give one bit of advice especially for new or younger photographers mm-hmm. in this age of social media it would be that it would be go to an art gallery look at a painting go and take a walk in the in in, in the fresh air whether it's a yeah. city a town a village or in the middle of nowhere just you know Try, try to to dial off and rather than dial into social media because I do see that as something that you know can really hinder your creative thought. You might have the most innovative idea, but you might see it in a different way or shot in a different way and think, "Oh, I can't do that." 
Mm. And I, I personally, I feel that's wrong because we're all unique and we all have a different way of looking at the same thing. And therefore that creates millions of different interpretations of exactly the same thing. Yeah. And I think that's, that's the power of good art, you know? Mm. I, I couldn't agree more with you on, on that last piece there. Um, I feel like uh, picking up what you said, well, what we were talking about, um, this um, important concept called passion, it has to do with this as well. Not only um, it is important for the reasons you stated, which are it makes you your work um, stronger and it makes you more authentic, but it also is so crucial or critical because eventually it's the only thing that will keep you going when everything else fails and that everything else is you got no money maybe you got no support and that support is that social media that might not you know be the amounts of likes and followers you you're looking for um so in the end, it it really is something that is only within you, and it's not externally based. So that why that's that's another one of the biggest reasons why passion is so crucial to have and to find, <laughs> because we no, don't have it. We just definitely, know. definitely. We just and then and the challenge, <laughs> the biggest challenge, maybe the biggest challenge, Lucas, is is finding the passion that. You know, yeah. that is a journey in itself. Um, there's no easy solution for that. But um, but you're right, you're right in the money. You know, that's that's the thing that keeps the you know, keeps you going, you know, uh, as the as the great John Bon Jovi used to say, you know, you've got to keep the faith. Oh, <laughs> and yeah. equally <laughs> yeah, there you go, right? Um, but uh, you know, the passion passion is the fuel, isn't it? And if okay. if, if the passion if the passion uh, withers then then the fire goes out and and passion is unique to you to so again it yeah. yeah without that then you know it, it won't keep you when the chips are down and you you know you, you, yeah you, you, when you're, you're tired and when you're up in the Everest way. and it's cold and you're hungry and, <laughs> <laughs> you know well, might go, go, I want to go home you yeah. know <laughs> yeah. passion is keeping you there so yeah exactly that exactly that mm -mm. Um, yeah. maybe I can try break some extra piece of advice from you uh, regarding topics like uh, financing your project and a topic mm -hmm. that is showcasing your work that is maybe you know in exhibition or in a newspaper you know outside of social media which is very accessible sure. yeah sure Financing, crikey, and that's that's pretty complex. So I guess there's obviously multiple routes to finance collaboratively with a brand, maybe mm -hmm. to suggest you you know you've got a theme or a story you want to tell, and do they want to help finance it or maybe support it with products or something along those lines? Resources of reaching some out sort. to the company. Yeah, that would that could be one way. Um, and equally, not just not just brands, but crikey, you know, charities. Yeah, okay. And I think I think that's that's one of the the routes. Certainly not overlooked at all. Christ, not far from it. But I would say it's one to consider closely because you're going to be valued. You know, a brand may not value you as a photographer, but mm -hmm. you know, because they've got their pick of thousands, but maybe a charity might. You know, and if you've got a charity, maybe that's local to you, uh, geographically, or even local to you emotionally. Maybe there's some connection with a you know, uh, some form of charity, then I think I couldn't think of a more friendly place to come from mm. than shooting with people like that. And I think, I think, I think, um, I don't know, I think judges, I think art buyers, I think art directors do see the more authentic work shining out where people have just shot in the local town with a couple of people or yeah. the local village or they've documented the same thing, which I know is, Everyone would have heard this before, but you know, there's there's a pretty famous um, fashion photographer, uh, Jamie Hawksworth, and he got noticed because he shot a very, should we call it, pared back, dialed down documentary project in a, in a city in the UK, which was okay. not glitzy or glamorous, but the way he shot it really appealed. And he's mm. a very famous fashion photographer right now. Um, and he's young and he's doing really, really well. So, I mean, you know, so I think that can be quite good inspiration to think, okay, don't need to go to Mongolia, don't need to go to Everest, 
just go to my local town and yeah. and I know people will say seeing it with new eyes, but you know that 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 is an art. That is that takes takes determination and, and hard work to do it, but it can be mm-hmm. done. So that's one way of like um navigating the whole financing challenge. Yeah. The other thing, of course, is just to pitch it to editors, you know, to to, to to talk to journals, to talk to magazines. I mean, editorial pays really poorly. Um, but if you set a goal for 2022 and you say, hey, I want to be published in. Yeah. Um, and you and you and you have it as a goal, and you set, you know, as one one of your goals, you know, okay, I want some editorial exposure, I want to hopefully try and do a uh, some sort of campaign or whatever it may be. Yeah. I want to be on Lucas's podcast, you know, whatever it could be, you know. But no, seriously, you know, this this is great, it's good conversation, it's real, it's it's it's, it's genuinely it's it's awesome. Mm. But um it's all part of the thing, and I think you know, sometimes you can you can you know pitch an idea to an editor. You know, I, I went up to, to visit an editor a couple of years ago of a magazine and explain what I used to do and explain how I'd like to contribute. And mm-hmm. uh, this is very, very fortunate. Uh, an hour later, he phoned me and said, I've got a project for you overseas shooting something. Oh, and, wow. and I went, Yeah, you know. Was that thanks to your pitch or? Uh, I just I mean, didn't particularly go in. It was more about just um, making the effort to travel, taking the time, mm-hmm. uh, be professional in the email, Going up, having something to show, explain who I was, and just putting myself across as professionally as I could. Mm. And I think that that's part of this too. And it's you know it, it is an industry built on relationships. Okay. So I think you know that kind of approach still says a lot about you as a person, and yeah. the more you can say about yourself as a person, I think the more valuable that is. So I think even if you're you know you're a young photographer looking for the first break, wants to shoot an ambitious project, you know don't be deterred. And be consistent in your approach and be persistent. And that, those are two words that were kind of given to me last year, if you will, which is be consistent, be persistent. Mm-hmm. Don't lose the faith. Don't get in, in, intimidated by Instagram. You know, yeah. don't get intimidated by social media. Just do your thing mm-hmm. and keep looking at what your thing is and keep honing it, keep building it, keep keep you know, pushing uh, your emails out, keep trying to phone editors. So I think that's a good route. I think editorial, I think, has... While it pays very poorly, I think it has an immense value for your professional progress, for your, you know, um, I hate to use the word, but exposure. Yeah. And I, but I think there's a lot of good in that. And you never know where it may lead you. I think that's the other thing about photography is, you know, the biggest thing I've learned, you know, is you never know what, you know, you've got to keep the faith and you never know what's around the corner. And, you mm-hmm. know, that that's that's hard to, to sustain that all the time. That, yeah, yeah. You all know that. <laughs> you know, yes, that's where passion does. Passion and determination comes into play, but but I think you know um, I think that's that's those are maybe wasted, and of course then there's you know crowdfunder as well, which I know is is another yeah. route, but I, you know I've not done that myself, but I, I, it seems pretty exhausting to me. But I think if you're consistent, persistent, if you're determined, then it's the route, mm. you know for sure. Okay, so we got all the, a few different options there for uh, when it comes to funding. Well, it, it kind of leaped into um, showcasing your work a little bit too, right? It kind of kind of like overflowed into that. I, I felt I felt that a little bit. Yeah, I, mean, I, th- I think I think the editorial editorial is a really good vehicle for that. I think editorial is really good. I think collaboration, you know, collaborating with maybe with athletes depends on your style of work or musicians or artists reaching mm. out. I think that's where Instagram is very good just to literally dial in and say, hey, look, I love what you do. This yeah. is me. Why don't we do something together? And you never know. You, yeah. you I mean, just it worked for us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's exactly right. I ended up shooting, you know, um, a member of Florence the Machine off the back of that, um, you know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you, you know, it, it does happen. <laughs> it sounds okay. random, but it, but I think it's fair to say it does happen. But I just okay. think I would use Use social media with a sense of deliberacy. Have a game. Have an end game. Have a have a direction you want to take it, and and, yeah. and and use it for that. Don't get swayed by other things. Sorry to keep talking about that, but I just I think that's important. You know, mm-hmm. it's important. All right, nice. I think I think we we got some express value there um, out from from this episode today so far already, which I'm very grateful for. Um, no, no, of course, no problem. <laughs> I I believe. We are reaching uh, sort of the end of this episode. Um, before we get there, 
Um, I would like to give you the opportunity to share with our listeners where they can check out your work, what you want them to see, um, or maybe, you know, um, yeah, on different social media, or website, whatever you got there. All right. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Lucas. Um, yeah, so my website is www.johnalexander.co. Uh, that, that, that's it. Um, I'm on Instagram, <laughs> as mm. I mentioned, <laughs> uh, and it's John Alexander Photography. Um, mm. So I'm there. I'm on Facebook, uh, John Alex Photo. I'm there. Um, so if you want to interact, reach out, look like, think, follow, brilliant. That'd be awesome. Uh, if you've got any you know, uh, observations, feedback, my work, and I would genuinely welcome it. That'd be awesome. Um, if there's anything I can, you know, kind of questions you may have about, you know, second careers, doing this a bit later in life, uh, you know, more than happy to help on that because I've had a lot of help from some brilliant people in the photography world over the last few years. So, you know, without their support and how my, I, you know, I don't know if I necessarily would still be doing this. So yeah. yeah, you know, that goes a long way. And I think that's one of the great things about this industry compared to others, you know, there's a lot of good people out there. Yeah. Um, willing to help. And, so, yeah. yeah. You know, so yeah. Um, yeah. Check out any of those, those, those areas. So yeah. John Alexander.co, John Alexander photography, Instagram or John Alex for the Facebook. That'd be cool. Yeah. Lovely. If people want to reach out to you, what will be the, the easiest way for you? Um, probably uh, probably head to the website because if you go there then you can see contact and then you can email right. me from there that's probably the best way I'd say yeah for sure okay great um, another thing I want to point out I mean we already touched on it but if you can um, um, maybe you should try go and um, visit the exhibition happening in Paris next year um, I think that one's going to be very interesting I have to check out who else is exhibiting exhibiting there which i'm not um totally sure of but um it's 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 a short it's a short period it's like two it's like three days or something and that's um, right yeah I mean, it's, there's a heap of talent honestly there's a, there's an absolute <laughs> talent. Yeah. I mean, if you yeah. google atlas, atlas for humanity paris and look it up you'll see what i mean the list is long i'm just a small name within that but uh there's a heap of talent so it's well worth the journey i would say if you can do it yeah nice um okay great so um before we before we end i want to give you the opportunity to share whatever you know might have been left on the table that we have not talked about um any idea story you feel like you rarely get asked but you would like to share yeah no worries i mean i think uh, i don't know um I always I think, get people on the spot for that for that one. Yeah, yeah, you sure have. <laughs> like, oh, uh, you've you done you you a coming. beautiful job, man. Um, <laughs> I think all I'd say is because uh, I'm trying to avoid saying anything I've, I've already done, but I think mm. uh, I think one of the coolest things about photography is um, it's a passport and it can lead you to some amazing places. So for me personally, yeah, I've, I had the privilege to live with Mongolia or Kazakh people in Mongolia, do the Everest thing, shoot underwater in the Caribbean. Um, take a picture of uh, one of my favorite bands, uh, be on a stage right next to another favorite DJ of mine in front of 12,000 people, random mm. moments, they continue. And all yeah. I can say is, is pick up your camera, go and shoot. I don't do enough of it. Uh, uh, you know, I need to do more myself. You know, I just, I would just say, just, um, you know, it, it, it's the cheapest passport you can find to amazing adventures and uh, just try as much as you possibly can enjoy that journey. And remember, it is a journey. Is that There is no necessarily end state. Just enjoy as much as you can because if you don't enjoy it, then holy cow, you know, yeah. it, it's time to go and think about something else, that's for sure. But uh, yeah, that's probably all I could add. Great. Uh, brilliant with those last words. Um, we're going to finish up. Thank you, John, for being here, for spending some Time with me having a great conversation like this. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Uh, I catch you guys next week. This has been John Alexander tuning in from France. I'm Lucas and this was a creative cast. 